New tonight, a man who shot and killed a Spokane police officer almost two years ago heard his sentence in court today. How much time he's facing tonight. We've now got an inch of snow on the record books for April and I'm tracking more cold weather and additional showers for your Saturday. And the body of another construction worker killed in the Baltimore bridge collapse pulled from the wreckage. The latest from Maryland. Crim 2 News 10 at 10 begins now. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight for Crem 2 News 10 at 10, where we give you more news in less time. I'm Cody Proctor. Mark is off tonight. This morning brought a blast of winter, so what will the weekend bring for us? Meteorologist Michelle Boss joining us in the Weather Center tonight. Thoughts on this morning's snow, Michelle? Didn't like it at all. Uh, we averaged about seven tenths of an inch of snow for the month of April and officially one inch of snow at the Spokane Airport. So I think we've got all the snow that we need for April. Still going to be seeing some cold air and the chance for a little bit more wet snow, especially tonight and tomorrow morning and especially across North Idaho. Things are relatively quiet right now on satellite and radar. We have mostly cloudy skies. If you look closely uh, towards north central Washington, you can kind of see a counterclockwise spin. That was the low that moved up into our our region earlier this morning that brought us the snow. We actually have more energy coming our way for tonight and tomorrow. Winter weather advisory out for portions of the Idaho Palouse and the Silver Valley for light snow in the valleys and four to eight inches of snow across Lookout Pass and the other elevations above 3,000 feet. But uh, temperatures should be melting that off pretty quickly over the weekend. We're at 40 right now in Spokane in the 30s across much of North Idaho. Short term forecast brings more showers of rain and snow tomorrow morning and just plain old rain showers tomorrow afternoon. A high of 48 on Saturday. Just a few showers possible on Sunday will start to dry out with a high in the lower 50s. Michelle, thank you so much. Right now, Spokane police are searching for a 12 year old runaway tonight. According to SPD, 12 year old Evea Zamora was last seen around 3 this afternoon. She's described as being 5 foot 9 inches, or excuse me, 4 foot 9 inches tall, weighing about 110 pounds, and has blonde hair and brown eyes. Spokane PD says she might be wearing a white sweatshirt with a Juice World logo, bright orange Nike sock or Nike shoes, and a red Nike backpack. If you have any information, police ask that you call Crime Check. Well, new at 10, a judge sentenced the man who shot a Spokane police officer in a drive-by shooting during Hoop Fest weekend in 2022 to more than 65 years in prison. According to Spokane Police, Ray Weinkoop ambushed a Spokane police officer driving on Garland, shooting him twice. He also recorded the shooting on a camera. Police say Weinkoop deliberately targeted police as a way to gain street cred. That police officer survived the shooting. He's since recovered after a short time in a hospital. Weinkoop pleaded guilty last October to attempted murder and 12 other charges. His co-defendant in this case, Isaac Ott, is set to go to trial April 22nd. Also new tonight, disturbing news out of Kootenai County after we learned an area doctor faces voyeurism charges. According to Coeur d'Alene Police, an employee at Dr. Spencer Green Dykes Medical Practice found video from a hidden camera that appeared to be in the practice's bathroom. Police say the video shows multiple victims in various stages of undress. Just before 5 o'clock tonight, Green Dyke turned himself into police. He's booked on two felony counts of sexual exploitation of a child and six felony counts of video voyeurism. His bond set at one and a half million dollars. Moving over to the west side tonight, three shootings in two days in Federal Way, two of them involving children and happening just two miles apart. Yesterday, a toddler was shot outside an IHOP on Southwest Campus Drive. That child later died. And today, a teen was shot in the leg outside an apartment this morning. Police say they suffered non life threatening injuries. Authorities say both of those shootings were not random. Meanwhile, another man was shot in the arm yesterday. While new within the last few hours, Baltimore officials confirmed, confirmed divers pulled up the body of another construction worker who died during last week's bridge collapse. President Joe Biden traveled to the scene this afternoon to see the devastation from the collapse. The president vowed his support for the community impacted by the disaster. He announced more federal funding to help the people and the city recover. Come here to grieve with you. It's feeling like having a black hole in your chest, like you're being sucked in, unable to breathe. The governor announced today a coalition of major employers in the Baltimore area pledged not to cut jobs despite the port closure. 
The Baltimore Ravens and Baltimore Orioles combined to donate $10 million to help recovery efforts. Israel's military released the findings of its preliminary investigation into airstrikes that killed seven World Central Kitchen Aid workers. In it, Israel says it found members of its armed forces thought they were hitting a Hamas target. And Monday's deadly attack was due to mistaken identification, errors in decision making and a violation of standard operating procedures. Israel's defense forces fired two officers as a result of the investigation. The probe acknowledged the strikes hit all three vehicles in the convoy, killing the aid workers. In the statement, the food charity demanded an independent commission investigate the incident. And then we saw the consequences of that continuous targeting attack. Seven, seven people dead, um, but there are seven on top of a list of more than another 190 humanitarian workers that they've been killed over the last six months. In the meantime, the White House says the president made clear U.S. policy with respect to Gaza hinges on Israel's immediate action to better protect civilians. He also called for an immediate ceasefire. A World Central Kitchen is a charity helping feed millions of people around the world during times of need. Well, Creme 2's Nicole Hernandez spoke with a man who volunteered with the organization while living here in Spokane. I'm glad I'm here. If you believe life is all about perspective, then you'd know an experience like this. Just everything is just just smashed. Would be life changing. It kind of awakened me as a, as a human. Jeremy Hansen volunteered with World Central Kitchen in 2017. How many meals we have here? Helping feed thousands of people after Hurricane Maria hit Puerto Rico. The looks on their faces and how they shared their uh, uh, how grateful and thankful they were and people were crying about it. just it was just amazing that perspective now seven years later giving jeremy a unique lens to see the crisis in gaza through they're wiping out all the food storage areas and, and everything like it's probably worse in, in gaza actually unfortunately not just for the people living there but for the aid groups too i was blown away kind of i was like oh my gosh like I might know some of these people. Seven people helping bring food to some of the world's most food insecure killed. I was talking to my wife yesterday and I was like, I would be, I would still be on that team and be doing, I'd be working for them. I'd be someplace, but I got these little guys. What he can do, though, is help World Central Kitchen collect donations. And then I was like, actually, I'm going to post this um, uh, QR code so people can just click on it and then go help donate. Giving them the resources to give out more meals on top of the more than 40 million they've already handed out. It's a really amazing organization. That's a perspective most everyone can probably agree on. Smashing on rice. In Spokane, Nicole Hernandez, Crime 2 News. Well, time right now for Nightbeat for a quick look at the day's top stories. We now know the names of the Spokane County Sheriff deputies who shot and killed a child rape suspect in Deer Park one week ago today. Last Friday, Deputy Josiah Luce and Detectives Samuel Turner and Travis West were assisting the Stevens County Sheriff's deputies while they served a warrant for a suspect who failed to appear for a child rape case. Deputies say they negotiated for several hours and ultimately decided to enter the home. That's when deputies fired their guns and killed the suspect. Investigators say they recovered a gun and two bullet casings at the scene of a deadly shooting from Sunday night. They searched the scene of a suspected arson in West Central Spokane, where one man was shot and killed by police. The arson suspect and the man killed were two different people. Police shot and killed the 38 year old Alan Jenks, saying he wasn't cooperating with their investigation and shot his gun when police tried to detain him. We have secured enough jurors for the exercise of peremptory challenges. We will plan on that occurring Monday morning. The first week of jury selection for the Chad Daybell murder trial wrapped up today. Daybell is accused of killing and conspiring to kill his worst first wife, Tammy Daybell, along with two of his current wife, Lori Vallow Daybell's children, Tylee Ryan and JG Vallow. For the last five days, the judge prosecution and defense work to pick 57 potential jurors who will move on to the next round. That next round of jury selection begins Monday. And looking ahead, the two Idaho men charged in connection to an ambush at a Boise hospital last month are set to appear in, Ada, in an Ada County courtroom Monday. 
28 year old Nicholas Umfanar is accused of helping fellow Aryan Knight member 31 year old Skylar Mead by shooting three corrections officers and helping him flee from a police hospital or excuse me, a Boise hospital last month. Both men are possible suspects in the deaths of two men in Nez Perce and Clearwater counties. They were set to appear together Monday morning and face multiple felony charges.